That time is past, and all its aching joys are now no more, and all its dizzy raptures. Not for this faint I nor mourn nor murmur. Other gifts have followed. For such loss I would believe abundant recompense. For I have learned to look on nature, not as in the hour of thoughtless youth, but hearing oftentimes the still sad music of humanity, not harsh nor grating, though of ample power to chasten and subdue. And I have felt a presence that disturbed me with the joy of elevated thoughts, a sense sublime of something far more deeply interfused, whose dwelling is the light of setting suns, and the round ocean, and the living air, and the blue sky, and in the mind of man, a motion and a spirit that impels all thinking so things, all objects of all thought, and rolls through all things. Therefore am I still a lover of the meadows and the woods and the mountains, and of all that we behold from this green earth, of all the mighty world of eye and ear, both what they have create and what perceive. Well pleased to recognize in nature and the language of the sense, the anchor of my purest thoughts, the nurse, the guide, the guardian of my heart, and soul of all my moral being. Nor, perchance, if I were not thus taught, should I the more suffer my genial spirits to decay. For thou art with me, here upon the banks of this fair river, thou my dearest friend, my dear, dear friend, and in thy voice I catch the language of my former heart and read my former pleasures in the shooting lights of thy wild eyes. Oh, yet a little while may I behold in thee what I was once, my dear, dear sister. And this prayer I make, knowing that nature never did betray the heart that loved her. Tis her privilege through all the years of this our life to lead from joy to joy. For she can so inform the mind that is within us, so impress with quietness and beauty, and so feed with lofty thoughts that neither evil tongues, rash judgments, nor the sneers of selfish men, nor greetings where no kindness is, nor all the dreary intercourse of daily life, shall e'er prevail against us, or disturb our cheerful faith that all which behold is full of blessings. Therefore let the moon shine on thee in thy solitary walk, and let the misty mountain winds be free to blow against thee. And in after years, when these wild ecstasies shall be matured into a sober pleasure, when thy mind shall be a mansion for all lovely forms, Thy memory be as a dwelling place for all sweet sounds and harmonies. Oh, then if solitude, or fear, or pain, or grief should be thy portion, with what healing thoughts of tender joy wilt thou remember me, and these my exhortations? Nor, perchance, if I should be where I no more can hear thy voice, nor catch from thy wild eyes these gleams of past existence, will thou then forget that on the banks of this delightful stream we stood together, and that I, so long a worshipper of nature, hither came, unweary in that service, rather say with warmer love, oh, with far deeper zeal of holier love. Nor wilt thou then forget that after many wanderings, many years of absence, these steep woods and lofty cliffs, and this green pastoral landscape, were to me more dear, both for themselves and for thy sake.